people yet on this earth. The rock and the banana plant argued as to which of them would give birth to people to populate the earth. In the course of events, it was the banana plant from whom people descended, and consequently people inherited all the frailty of the banana plant, susceptible to dangers and even death. According to our Balangao legends, the descendants of the banana plant originated with us in the north central part of Luzon in the Philippines, where bountiful water supplies made it possible for our incredibly hardworking ancestor to hand carve these terraces, believed to be 2,000 years old. Life is really very hard for us Balangaos. Our struggle has always been to stay alive and to keep our children alive. In the past, our problems have been twofold. How to produce enough food for each and how to have enough pigs and chickens to keep the spirits pacified so they'll let our children live. What we've planted ourselves is all we've ever had to eat. And the question has always been, will it be enough? Will natural disaster, typhoons, or insects ruin our crops? Will plagues kill our animals? And now the 20th century has added new dimensions to our worries. Our children have heard about school and they want to go. So now we need money, besides food. I think about my children. Can I provide enough fields for them to eke out a living? People used to get by with just a minimum of hand-woven clothing plus a blanket, all woven from homegrown cotton. But now we need money for clothes we never used to need. And the children see things, and then they want them. Life is so unsettled and so unpredictable. Six of our 12 children didn't live. For some years, my wife lived in a state of numbness as one after another of the children died. The memory of those days is all a blur in her mind, and that's what hurts so. We desperately tried to obey everything the spirits demanded. When we go to get wood in the forest, if we accidentally step on one of the spirits' houses, or even worse, on one of their children, we'll have to sacrifice. Oh, we'll know when we've done it. You see, they let us know by making one of our children sick. Then we go to a spirit medium who contacts the spirit and finds out what we've done and what the price will be. If the spirit talks to one of our children on the trails, he'll surely get sick and we'll have to sacrifice. That's why we put a leaf in the child's hair. Maybe the spirits will think he's a tree. Maybe the spirits just want to increase their herds of pigs and flocks of chickens. They'll just make one of the children sick or cause a dream or make an appearance, or one of a lot of other things. Then we've got to sacrifice, otherwise our child will die. Sometimes they die anyway. We only learn afterwards that without knowing it, we'd fail to do something. Our life is an incessant inquiring after the spirits, trying to appease them through endless ways we've been taught. And the spirits do have power. We've seen it, and we're afraid of it. We'd heard about medical help, but never had much available. And it was a two-day walk just to reach the nearest road. Besides, only some sicknesses would respond to medicine. Most of them demand sacrifices. The spirits, however, have taught us some things to do when people are sick. Never let a person with dysentery drink water. In fact, we know anyone who is sick shouldn't have water. And don't let a woman in labor lie down or close her eyes until the baby is born. And she also must not drink anything, not even if it's two or three days before the baby comes. Many, many women die in childbirth, and it's always the ones who close their eyes, and then it's as if they sleep. They are the ones who die. Oh, we know a lot of things the spirits teach, but we've never heard much really good news until just lately. Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. He that hath no money, come.
Lawen ang palin pat ah anak apo Jus ko po hen nangala hen alena mga chi hen chungun yuta magkahalin. I'm Tekla, the one who came to be like a sister to Wami. Wami is the name we gave Joe here in Balangao. All of my real brothers and sisters died in childhood. Out of seven children, I was the only one to live. Maybe it's because we were the descendants of an evil spirit. Maybe that's the reason the rest died because the spirits wouldn't allow them to live. You see, my father's ancestor married a beautiful girl he found in a cave in the forest, and it's said that she was the daughter of a spirit living in those mountains. Finally, the spirit embodied himself and came to live in a clay pot. We know it as the Dueto, and down through the centuries, it has been exceedingly powerful. It's helped us Balangas defeat other tribes in headhunting. During the war, some Japanese soldiers touched it without giving sacrifices of eggs and chickens, and they died. It talks, and it has power, and it demands sacrifices. To save my life, the only child left, my father sold his soul and became the holder of the Toweto. The spirits told him I'd live only if he'd take charge of it. So he did. It's in his house today. And like it said, I did live. And my father became the leading spirit medium in all our area of Belangau. As a child, I'd heard a Catholic priest tell about a God who had angels to protect little children, and that he was good. Oh, how I longed to know that God. But my friends told me I couldn't possibly be baptized a Christian. Descendants of evil spirits can't become Christians, they insisted. But oh, how I long to know this God. I grew up, was married, and had children. And I thought, if only I don't sacrifice to the spirits, maybe then God will accept me. But I fought wars with the spirits. They tried to kill me. They brought me endless sicknesses. When I was so sick, I tried to flee from the spirits by having people carry me from house to house, hoping to get away from them. But they followed me still. I even would throw sand in their eyes, but they still kept talking to me and appearing to me. I was almost ready to give up. Maybe it was true what my father told me, that all this sickness was because I wouldn't sacrifice. My father scolded me so, saying I didn't love my children and that I didn't care if they died. Because why wouldn't I sacrifice so that their sicknesses would be removed? If only I could know that God. And then they came, Annie and Wami. No one could figure out why they had come here. After they had been with us a while and had learned to speak some Balangao, Wami told me that they'd come to put God's words in a book so we could read that book and know what God wants to tell us. I couldn't believe it. To actually put God's word in a book? To know God? Although others looked at them blankly, my joy knew no bounds. Why, this is what I dreamed of. Only later did I learn that Wami had been praying since high school days for people she'd go to someday, and that included me. They needed to learn the language. Aha, uh -huh, yes, I would be the one to teach them. Then I could ask them about God. Right now I could only understand a little because they could only tell me in their language. But as the months went by, they learned more and more Balangao. 
I did everything I could to be around them, and little by little, I began to understand why I could actually talk to God and in Belango and tell him all my fears. Jesus Christ is more powerful than the spirits. He would protect me. I could trust him and whatever happened to me would be up to him, his responsibility. He wasn't like the spirits. He didn't lie. And he didn't need my pigs and chickens like they did. I actually mattered to him. You can't imagine how my life changed and the relief I felt. A world full of books couldn't tell all the great help I've experienced from God. This book contains the answers to my life. From 1962 until 1968, only two people made this commitment to God, Tekla and Andrea. But little by little, as the scriptures began to be written down in the Balanga's language, they started to believe it. Kanal, my Balanga father, tells it from his point of view. My name is Kanal, the one who became the father of Ani and Wami. One day in 1962, some white men passed through our place in the mountains. They were on a survey, whatever that is, and asked if we'd like some of their people to come live in our place of Balangau. I'd seen white men up in our mountains at the end of World War II. Yes, I think so. We'd like some of them to come live with us, and so they came. But to my utter amazement and stark horror, they were both girls. It really wasn't safe for girls. After all, didn't they know we were headhunters? So I had to become the father of Ani and Wami and take care of them. I had to be sure people saw them eating at our house so they'd know I was protecting them with my life. For you see, if we Balangaos feed someone, that's our promise that if anything ever happens, we'll protect the ones we fed with our lives. Then one day, Ani went home to get married. I was worried that Wami would get lonesome, and if she did, maybe she'd go home too. And if she went home, who would give us medicine? So I insisted that she always eat all her meals at our house. Wami always ate with us, and she always talked about God. But I didn't like to be always talking about God. I was satisfied. I'd been baptized, and I sacrificed when necessary. True, six of our twelve children had died, but what had I left undone? Maybe it was just my luck. There was nothing more to do, and I knew it. But she kept telling me about God and how to believe. But I already did believe there was a God. So I just tried to be polite, for I'd done everything properly. It was a long time later, maybe 1968, when my daughter gave me something to correct. It was a letter written by John, a disciple of Jesus. And it was in my language. I started to read it. Ooh, I'd never been worried before about getting to heaven, but this, it made me very worried. I guess I'd never listened very well to my daughter. She didn't seem to realize that children don't teach their fathers. But this, it was written in a book. And the book itself was amazing, for it actually had a genealogy. Why, that is absolute proof to us Balangaos that it was real. And these very genealogies went right back to the beginning of time. 